traders, Cousin Vinny coming to you from theclosingprint.com, November 15th, 2020. In this edition of your weekend video newsletter, we'll discuss the indices, all of which moved higher, with the exception of the NASDAQ and the London Stock Exchange, with some selling and the big cap tech names, while most of our indicators remain bullish. The bond stock ratio is still bullish, tick and tick Q are on a bullish turn, and NIMO and NAMO cycles are moving higher. Bonds saw weakness. We did see the 10-year moving higher. That's bullish for equities. Commodities with gold moving lower. Copper moving higher. That's bullish for equities, especially in the construction, home builders, and home improvement sectors. Heat maps are improving for the S&P 500 sectors and international markets. We will look at some IBD 50 names, a smaller list this week in addition to some MarketSmith growth to 50 relative strength and stocks that show up on the blue dot scan in Cyan. The Dow Industrials have a nice list of names that look good going into this week. And we have Bukowski with a green signal since November the 2nd at 80.8%. That's bullish with 10 bearish patterns, 42 bullish patterns, and 63 patterns waiting for breakout. Bottom line, we're a bullish 15 bullish indicators, 3 neutral, and 2 bearish going into this week. With resistance at 3600 and support at 3500. Let's start off with the S&P Equal Weight Index given the underperformance of the big cap tech stocks that we saw pull back last week. We are above the February highs prior to COVID-19 and finished on a strong note on Friday with the number of stocks trading above their 50 period moving average approaching 85%. Not in the red zone just yet like we saw back in June which led to the last significant pullback. We're above this triple top area and all of the moving averages. On top of that, if we add in the mid cap 400 and the small cap 600, we have a reference with the S&P 1500 composite that remains on a bullish signal. So we're watching very closely this consolidation pattern and whether or not we can continue to move higher as Bollinger Bands start to open up, suggesting volatility is picking up again to start the third week of trading in November with seven weeks to go before ringing in the new year. If we reference a even larger group of stocks, the Wilshire 5000 shows us this triple top breakout zone with RSI above 50 and the Kopak cycle in a bullish trajectory, suggesting a potential breakout and follow through in the short term. If that wasn't enough, we also have the Russell 2000 up nearly 90% since the March low to the recent highs that we pegged last week with RSI rising on the weekly time frame and volume increasing, showing that small caps will most likely continue with their relative performance. MACD's above its signal line showing the bulls are in control. So we might add to small caps this week especially if institutions confirm that they're still buying. That said, the NASDAQ did reflect some selling last week and some of the big cap tech names while still being in a bullish trend with the 20 periods moving average on the weekly time frame holding price action. Two weeks ago, we did pull back into that price action last week while buyers stepped up, helping price action close in the upper half of last week's range. All is not lost with the NASDAQ 100. Given the six-month rally and the past two months consolidation, we are looking for a follow-through into year-end as the post-election seasonal patterns remain strong into January, going back 70 years of price action, no matter which party takes over leadership in the White House, which leads us to consulting breath, whether or not breath is improving or fading, 
we can see that we had a nice bounce on the S&P 500, the mid caps, the small caps, and even the NASDAQ 100 bounced a bit on Friday, moving away from the zero line, headed back towards the positive zone plus 30%, while the NIMO McClellan oscillator for the New York Stock Exchange turned higher last week, creating a trough, a higher low, as more stocks are participating and advancing stocks beat out declining stocks, making a higher high to end the week. With the number of new highs versus new lows made a modest gain on Friday. The moving average is trying to turn. We did have a higher low and a lower high still. So we want to see that black line moving higher and see spikes in the histogram greater than what we left off with on Friday during this week of trading. Finally, we'd like to point out what institutions are trading. These are the 75 stocks most commonly held by institutions in their core portfolio. We definitely want to see this index moving higher. We have green elder sticks and blue elder sticks coming off the 20 period moving average. We have a sideways range similar to what we saw on the S&P 500 spiders last week, suggesting that we could see a breakout and a test of the highs this week. Bonds moved lower last week, reflected in the bond stock ratio. As this ratio drops, that's bullish for equities, telling us that bonds like the TLT continue to move lower in their range which leads us to the 10-year weekly chart. Following through, moving higher, we can see momentum continues in a bullish direction. Moving off the lows reflects that positive correlation becoming stronger as it approaches one. And the S&P 500 breaks out with the 10-year yield, which is also echoed in junk bonds and high-yield corporate debt. As investors look for higher yields, these indicators are telling us to be risk on, look for follow through, and not for a breakdown like we had back in February into the lows of March. With a backdrop of the US dollar moving sideways in its range, approximately the lower half of its range, while commodities like copper move opposite and higher, which is bullish for construction related names, builders and home improvement as copper continues its path higher. As we look for crude oil to do the same, looking for a break back to the top of this 24 week range and a move back above 43 in a 10 month in a $10 per barrel range for the past 24 weeks. We're looking for a follow through and a breakout higher, especially if you're bullish equities. Contrast this with the path in gold, which is telling us there is lack of interest in a safety trade. Also what we saw in the US dollar. You'd expect both of these to be moving higher if there was a concern or a flight to safety, leading us to a setup going into this week for equities to move higher. Visually, the sector heat map is telling us that stocks are improving in these groups, especially in the staples, food and beverage, energy, oil and equipment, exploration and production, the financials. In part, most of sectors are in part with most sectors improving last week, in addition to what we saw in the international markets. So if we look at the individual sectors, it shouldn't be a surprise that most closed higher on Friday. We are starting to see energy performing very well. We've got a 20, 50 day cross coming. While we saw staples breaking out last week, consumer discretionary remaining somewhat flat, while the ratio between the two consumer discretionary consumer staples reflects that outperformance by consumer staples 
as we're starting to see the shorter time frames flatten out at the highs. Keep an eye on this. It could take a couple of weeks or it could take a few months like it did back in 2018 for this to flatten out and start to turn lower. That would tell us that institutions are positioning in a bearish posture. Whereas in February, it took only a week or two before this rolled over. Keep an eye on this ratio. Very important to follow this into year end. For now, we're just watching the ratio. For now, just keep it up. For now, it's more bullish than bearish. Here's Adobe looking for this to follow through and move above the 9 and 21 day. Not my favorite setup for the week, but we are seeing stocks that have stochastics turning higher as a potential catalyst with volume increasing, price action reflecting buyers at the end of the day on Friday. RSI needs to get back above 50. This could be a setup, a mean reversion and a follow through back to the highs. While stocks like Applied Materials show relative strength, embedded price action near the highs, I'd rather a pullback into this zone as a better setup rather than chasing prices higher. That said, Stochastics is turning up and MACD is showing bulls are in control. Friday we saw a move higher on above average volume. While some of the pharmaceutical stocks look good, Bristol Myers, Squibb, Pfizer for obvious reasons with the vaccine. Keep an eye on Gilead, AstraZeneca, and Merck. As many of these show the same pattern and could return to 52-week highs very quickly. In addition to what we reflected in the copper chart moving higher, how it's better for builders, construction, companies that provide these services, like Builders First Source, we're watching for potential follow-through into an area of no overhead supply. RSI is rising. Stochastic's turning at 50. MACD's above its signal line. Just need to see more volume. Potentially a nice setup. Yet stocks from other sectors like retail continue to trend. Crocs is moving higher. Walmart looked very good as well, which we'll cover in a few minutes. RSI has turned upward, volume starting to pick up, and MACD turning along with Stochastics, looking for a setup this week and a follow through, and Crocs. With Builders moving higher, like Builders First Source, and Copper, looking for DR Horton, Lennar, looking for other Builders to continue this move higher and close above the 50 day for the second day. RSI will respond as a function of price along with MACD and Stochastic noting the volume as the stock starts to reverse and move higher. Danaher also closing above the 21 day and the 90 MA last week. RSI is trying to turn. Stochastics turning from oversold. Volume increasing. Digital turbine consolidating along the 9 and 21 day. Looking for this to bounce off this volume by price node as well as RSI rising. Stochastics turning. Volume increasing. Dollar General, not my favorite setup, but it's holding above the 50 day. Looks like it's coiling, getting ready to move. Retail like Crocs and Walmart, all giving us a signal. It looks like it's going to follow through this week. Stochastics turning higher, volume starting to pick up. Be careful with Etsy. I know some of you were trading this one last week. It's got to get above the 9 and 21 day. Notice the 9 and 21 day is descending towards the 50 day. Looks like a series of lower highs and lower lows. So if this fails, I would take the stop, just get out of the out of the way. We could test these lows again. If it does manage to close higher on Monday and Tuesday, gets back above the 9 and 21 day, then we could look for a follow through back up to 52 week highs. Just note it and be careful this week. Facebook, a little bit disappointing last week. I thought we were going to break out and move above that 279 zone into 280 and then retest the highs. Watch it this week. I'm looking for a follow through. Stochastics is turning. Futu broke out last week. I like the volume. Shows institutions. Watching for a handle. It did fade a bit on Friday. So I'm looking for a little pullback for an entry. If you missed it on the breakout this week. Into it. INTU continues its bullish trend. RSI is above 50. Price action close enough to the 90MA. Looking for a follow through this week. 
Volume increasing on Friday, stochastics turning, MACDs above its signal line showing the bulls are in control. Semiconductors reflecting relative strength last week, watching how they trade out this week. Stochastics turning up, MACD above its signal line, volume increasing on Friday. Looking for Lowe's and Home Depot to both follow through. This week, RSI get back above 50. Stochastics is turning, watching MACD and volume. Monster Beverage, not a lot of people talking about this one. I'm thinking this is going to follow through. Close enough to the 9 MA for a good setup. Pops above this volume by price band. This could zoom back up to 52-week highs, volume increasing. MACD above its signal line and rising as Stochastics turning. I like the setup on this one. Another beverage company, a little bit extended now, but showing relative strength. We pointed it out over the last couple of weeks. This was probably going to move higher off the 50-day. RSI rising, volume increasing, all the oscillators turning higher. Don't chase it. Wait for a nice little pullback for potential entry. Or day trade it with ABCD pattern. NVIDIA, I saw some sources on the financial media down playing this particular stock this week. Looking for a follow through. Buyers stepped up at the 50 day on Friday. Stochastics turning, MACD's flat. Perkin Elmer, PKI, looking for this to follow through. Came back to the 50-day last week, Monday and Tuesday. Followed through. Buyers stepped up. Volume started to increase. As someone decided to sell their position, it looks like. Volume did come back in, so they scooped up shares at the 50-day. Watching for follow-through stochastics is turning. Regeneron, another one of those pharmaceutical stocks that I'm watching in addition to Merck and Bristol-Myers and Pfizer. This gets above the 50-day. Could be breaking this downtrend. Service now, buyers stepped up at the 9 and 21 day, almost hit the 50 day before reversing last week. Looking for them to return. Keep an eye on Taiwan Semiconductor. If this one moves higher, would also be watching Marvell, LRCX, and a number of other names in this group to see if semiconductors continue this week. And we're looking for Workday to follow through and push off of the 50 day, consolidated for the last few weeks. RSI is above 50, stochastics turning up, volume starting to pick up again. Also watch these stocks on the Dow Industrials that look good this week as well. Many of them look like they're going to follow through. AXP, Continuation, Boeing looks good. Caterpillar, Disney, we're watching for a follow through there. CVX, a lot of the energy names getting bought up. Cisco off of earnings. The banks looking better. Goldman Sachs, IBM looks like it wants to move above the 50-day. That's looking good. Looking for a follow through there. Also watching Walmart, as we previously mentioned. Really like what I'm seeing on Walmart. Strength, the trend is continuing. RSI is rising, showing that there is potential for more follow through. Okay, traders, that's going to do it for me. This is Cousin Vinny coming to you from theclosingprint.com. Be sure to check out the rest of these names under the MarketSmith relative strength scan and the blue dot scan. All of these look strong as well showing very similar results to what we previously presented during this weekend's video. I'll send out a watch list later tonight around 11, 11.30 on the East Coast, 8, 8.30 on the West Coast, so be sure to check that out. Otherwise, have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.